I'm Rochelle, I'm a compulsive eater, and like all of you, I weigh and measure three meals a day off of the Cambridge Gray Sheet. I write it down, I commit it to my sponsor, another qualified person. Abstinence has to be the most important thing I do for myself today and every day. And I am very grateful to be abstinent with my food so I can be aware of my emotions and work on abstinence with my emotions. And Vicki, thank you so much for asking me to qualify. It's, it's truly a pleasure. I love this meeting. Um, I love the accents. I love feeling like I'm not home. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna start with a couple of, um, with the reading of the acceptance on page 417 in the big book, because I really identify with that. Acceptance is the answer to all my problems today. When I am disturbed, it is because I find some person, place, thing, or situation, some fact of my life unacceptable to me. And I can find no serenity until I accept that person, place, thing, or situation as being exactly the way it is supposed to be at this moment. Nothing, absolutely nothing happens in God's world by mistake. Until I can accept my alcoholism, my compulsive eating, I could not stay sober or abstinent. Until I accept life completely on life's terms, I cannot be happy. I need to concentrate not so much on what needs to be changed in the world as on what needs to be changed in me and in my attitudes. And if I can, um, follow this to the best of my ability. Um, I can maintain my abstinence. Um, I can have a better life. Um, there's also two quotes that I have um, that I'd like to, to just read off so that I don't forget them. And um, one is I have a sign someplace in my basement stashed away Peace is not the absence of conflict, but it's the ability to cope with it. And the other thing is that pro a program doesn't promise to take away my difficulties. It only gives me the ability to cope with them. And these are two very important things that I have to remember. Um, my abstinence date is August 29th of 2002. Um, however, I have been in gray sheet since um, October of 1994. Um, I did not go out at any point, but I had two situations where my food was not acceptable on, on two occasions. Um, and um, just, I'll try to give a brief history. Um, I. I was over 200 pounds when I came into the program um, 25 years ago, and I am maintaining about a 70 pound weight loss at this point. Um, I am going to be 76 years old um, in February of this coming year. And I don't believe that I would be living on this earth if I was not abstinent. Um, there is history of stroke on my mother's side of the family. She and her two sisters and her mother were all gone by the age of 57. And it was all due to high blood pressure. Um, not necessarily always weight related, but high blood pressure. I'm lucky that I take after my father um, who had low blood pressure. But I came, when I came, I was in OA in, um, I came into OA in July, on July 10th, 1974. My younger son was not quite two months old. And at that time, OA was gray sheet and I followed it until I reached my goal weight. And then they, my sponsors started reintroducing carbohydrates. And we all know where that goes. And I went there. Um, and I was out of the rooms for about 10 years. Um, didn't, doesn't mean that I didn't try to do something during that time. I did a, at least one um, liquid diet with a, um, some kind of a therapist. I, I don't think he was a medical doctor. Um, and of course it worked um, until, you know, he told me I could start eating food. Hello, you know, <laughs> what else is new? Um, and I, I was successful in Weight Watchers in um, 1968, 
eight and nine, I guess it was. Um, and, you know, and then I found out that my mother died and I got on the plane to come from, from, New, from uh, Pennsylvania to New York. And I like to say that, um, and it's getting to be an old joke, but anyway, um, I stopped at the um, concession stand on my way to the plane and I bought something in a brown wrapper and it was not Playboy magazine. And those of you who are old enough know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and those of you who are too young, well, think about it. <laughs> um, so I've had my experiences with my ups and downs through my years. And then um, about 25 years ago, um, I reconnected with somebody that I had known in OA and we both had completely different lifestyles at this point. She had not been married before. She was married now. She had two little kids, two little girls. And we had both become more religious. And we met at the rabbi's house. And um, over the course of time, she went, she went into gray sheet. And um, she and somebody else that I knew in, in OA also um, kind of convinced me to try it again. Now I was almost 50 years old and um, I, you know, it was not gonna work because you know, I was almost 50 years old and my metabolism changed and you know, it's, it's just not gonna work. So um, like we used to say in OA, you know, try it for 30 days and if you're not happy, we'll give you back all your misery and all of your weight. So I tried it for 30 days and um, during that 30 days, I was scheduled to go to Japan for a business trip. I worked for the Food and Drug Administration back when uh, the agency uh, had some credibility. Sorry for the uh, political. <laughs> um, uh, it's very disappointing today uh, for me to see it. Um, anyway, I was doing um, in, um, inspections, audits of pharmaceutical companies to make sure they were in compliance with, with FDA regulations. And I was very concerned because um, I felt that, you know, I, my concept of oriental people, and I'm not sure that's the right term today. My son always corrects me, sorry. Um, it shows my age again. <laughs> um, that they're all small, petite, and that they much prefer to deal with a man than with a woman. And um, I felt the only thing that I could do to um, kind of fit in a little more was be, was be a little bit thinner. So that was you know, one of the reasons that I, that I started back into um, Gray Sheet. And one of the other reasons was um, that I was divorced and I was only 50 years old. I know to some of you that probably sounds old, but it, it ain't, ain't, it ain't that old. Um, and I said, I, you know, I don't really want, I would like not to spend the rest of my life alone. Um, and at the weight that I was, I was not meeting anybody because no matter what age you are, people are going to look at the book cover and not try to find out what's inside the book. And so I started, um, those were my three reasons for coming into Gray Sheet. And, um, and I was successful. I came back after my month in Japan or three weeks, I don't remember which it was. And I had, but after my first month, I had lost a significant amount of weight and I was shocked. Um, and I've stayed here ever since. Um, I did um, meet my second husband after I had been abstinent for a while. And um, of course, you know, what do you do on a date to go out and eat? So it was like, do I take out the scale or don't I? It was early in my abstinence. And I said, if I don't take out the scale, I'm not going to have my abstinence. And there's no guarantee that this man is going to call me again. So let's take out the scale. So I took out the scale and I put it on this little four by four table in the corner. And he said, what's that? And I said, in order to look the way I look, this is what I have to do. End of conversation. And, um, and he supported me. 
For almost 18 years, he supported me in my program. That's not to say that he didn't sometimes try to, I'm not even gonna say sabotage me, but he didn't try to, you know, get me to eat something that we don't eat. Um, and there was once that I did, and, and I'm not gonna go into that. It was for religious reasons and I, it was a holiday and whatever, but I did that. And the next meal I was back on my abstinence. Ten minutes. Um, Thank you. So, um, so that's where I am. Um, I am now alone. Um, I shouldn't say alone. My husband is um, deceased for almost, for over seven years, and I do live alone. Um, and I weigh and measure my food, and I cook delicious things, and I started a new career this week. <laughs> Lo and behold, it's never too late. Um, I'm working as a companion to somebody who has had some psychological problems, <laughs> excuse me. And um, you know what, I can use my program doing this. And, um, and it gives me some structure. And, um, you know, as I as the sayings that I said, you know, program doesn't promise to take away the difficulties. I have a very, very difficult situation with my husband, with my second husband's daughter and financial things. Um, money, as far as I'm concerned, is the root of all evil. Um, and, um, and I could not be going through what I'm going through in my life if I was not weighing and measuring my food and if I was not turning to a higher power because I know that these kinds of situations are all the situations that led me to eating. I mean, I just have to go back to when my mother died to, you know, to look at that, um, to when things were difficult in my house with my first husband. Um, you know, it, it's life and I have a choice. I can either be abstinent and go through these, these things and deal with them and try to deal with the emotions that are involved with it, or I can check out and just start eating. And that is not gonna get me in. It's not gonna change any situation that I'm in. I will tell you that I went through my second wedding abstinently. I went through my son's weddings abstinently. I went through one son's divorce abstinently, if you think your divorce is hard, go through a child's divorce. You know, I mean, it's like, how can you do this to my child? You know, forget about me. How can you do it to my child? Um, I have gone through abstinently the death of my father, my sister, my stepsister, and my husband. And I weighed and measured or somebody else came and made meals for me and brought me weighed and measured meals. I don't wanna tell you where I think I would be if, if I wasn't abstinent with all of these things. I mean, it's, it's a miracle. It's an absolute miracle. And you know, the difficult relationships that we have with those that are close to us you know, are only made more difficult, I feel, for me, if I'm not abstinent. I am very, very grateful that I have two grown sons who have their own families. They have their own problems, but they are always there for me. And they, I cannot tell you how many times in the past couple of years they have talked me off the ledge. I come up with some really crazy harebrained ideas about how to deal with my husband's daughter and the financial situation that I'm in in relation to her. And my kids, you know, let me know that it's not going to solve the situation and it's probably only going to make it worse. And if I didn't have them to talk to, I'd be in a real mess. And I only know that I can count on them because I'm abstinent. Uh, you know, it, 
Relationships with children and, and, and their spouses is not easy. My, grand, my daughter-in-laws always compare notes and they say I'm the best guest because I always bring my own food. And my daughter-in-law in Teaneck, New Jersey, where I visit frequently and stay for the Sabbath or holidays, she says, not only does she bring her own food, but she brings her own linens. Because my feeling is this is a second wife for my son. She caters to my grandchildren. I want to do as much as I can and make her life as easy as possible because she is an angel. And if I can make it easier that she doesn't have to wash a set of linens because I slept on them for one night, you know, that is something that I can do without any problem. Fine. Thank you, Madeline. And I can only do, the, do these things because I am abstinent and because I weigh and measure my food and because I have my higher power and because I come to meetings and I absolutely love love your meeting. Thank you for letting me share.